Welcome to this tutorial on designing screen layouts using DragonRad Designer. When you created your application using DragonRad's new project wizard and selected the listings table as your main table, DragonRad automatically created a main screen that displays a list or grid of property listings and three detail screens for adding new records, updating records, or copying records from that main table. You can add as many top level and or detail screens as you wish, and then use a combination of menus and buttons to navigate among them. A top level screen is associated with a top level or main database table, and generally displays a list or grid of records retrieved from that table. A detail screen might display a single record of a main table, a list of records from a detail table, or both. Here is the main screen with a grid control for the listings table as generated by the wizard. In a subsequent tutorial, I will show you how to transform this basic grid into a really attractive list. If I click on one of the rows, I get a menu allowing me to go to the update screen. Here is the default update screen as generated by the wizard. Let's go back to the main listing screen in DragonRad Designer. I would like to add a header with a DragonRad logo. I will simply drag the header control onto the screen and then drag an image field onto the header. In the properties area, I can center the image on the header and then center the contents of the image in the field itself. I'm going to remove the label text and select the DragonRad logo as the default image. I could also select an appropriate background color, but I think the default is fine. I'm going to set the focusable property to false as that will simplify navigation. By default, the app currently downloads all of the records from the listings table. Eventually, I want to add the ability for the user to select records based on geographic location, various criteria, and other parameters. I will show you how to formulate that search in a later tutorial, but for now I will simply add three screens for location, criteria, and the current screen, thumbnails. But rather than creating individual screens, I will create three tabs. In the toolbox, simply drag the tab control onto the screen. As you can see, it creates two tabs. Since the current screen will display the thumbnails of the listings, I will label it as such. Tab 2, I will rename location. Then I'll right click on the location tab, click add tab, and rename tab 3 criteria. To put the tabs into a more logical sequence, I'll click the reorder tab button and use the up and down arrows to put the tabs into, into the desired sequence. Specifically, Location, Criteria, and Thumbnails. In the Location tab, I want to be able to select listings by GPS location or by municipality. I will show you how to formulate these searches in a later tutorial, but for now I will simply drag and drop a GPS location field and a text field onto the screen. Now let's look at the Criterias tab. On this tab I want to be able to select listings based on various search criteria including type of listing, type of building, price range, and number of bedrooms and bathrooms. Again, I will show you how to formulate the search in a later tutorial. For now, I will simply add the required fields onto the screen. All of these criteria will be drop-down lists, so I will drag a list box onto the screen. A list box must be associated with a list of data, so I will associate this list with a lookup table called listing type. And I will specify the fields within that table that should be used to populate the drop-down list. In a later tutorial, I will cover drop-down lists in more detail. I will not take the time just now to repeat this process to add all of the remaining drop-down lists. Let's move on to the update screen. 
The update screen is where the user can view the details of a specific listing. In addition to information about the listing, I would also like to be able to display the location of the property on a map, to display additional photos of the property, the vendor's name and contact information, and available time slots for viewing the property, as well as general information regarding the municipality in which the property is located. Each of these items will be a separate tab. On this screen, the wizard automatically created three tabs, which I can rename as Details, Photos, and Vendor. Then I will add three additional tabs. The first for Map Location, then for Viewings, and finally for Municipality. I'm going to set the width of each of these tabs to 55 pixels, except for Map Location and Municipality, which I will set to 90. The Details tab that was generated by the wizard already contains most of the fields that I want to display because all of these fields will display inform because all of these tabs will display information about the same property I'm going to use the header to display the listing ID and the asking price for the property first I will delete the default label provided by the wizard then I will drag the listing ID and the price onto the header I'm going to reformat these fields a little bit I'll shorten up the label text here. I'm going to delete the label text for price because that's rather self-evident. I'll set the uh, font size to 14 and make it bold. And for the uh, for the price, I'm going to use a format string to make it actually look like a price. I can also save a bit of space by deleting the subtitle. There are a lot of fields on this screen, and the photo, perhaps one of the most important, is hidden at the bottom. I'm going to drag the photo field up closer to the top. A good approach would be to place the photo and the text description side by side. To do that, I'm going to drag a horizontal panel onto the screen. And then I'll drag the photo and the description into that horizontal panel. I will set the field widths to 35% and 65% respectively and I will delete the label text in both cases. I'm also going to change the type of field for the description from a text box which is limited to a single line to a note field which allows multiple line display and I'll set the number of lines available to 10. I'm going to do the similar thing for the uh, the beds and uh, and baths, dragging a horizontal panel. And I think I'd like the address field to be above the photo and the description. I'm going to do the same thing for the number of stories and the land size. There, I think that's it for the details tab. On the vendor tab, Again, I'll delete the uh, subtitle. And I'm going to add the vendor name, which is a text box. The vendor name I'm going to associate with the listings table. And the vendor name field. On the details screen, I didn't have to worry about that because those screen fields were already associated with the database. I'll also add a, an email field for the vendor email address. And a phone field for the vendor telephone number. By using these specific field types in the app, when you click on the phone field, it will optionally dial the number for you. And similarly for the email field, it will compose and send an email from within the application. Let's go to the municipality tab. On the municipality tab, I will display the photograph and description of the area side by side using a horizontal panel, as was done in the details tab. I will also add a media field that will allow the user to hear a narrative description of the area. The photo field 
will be associated with the municipality photo and the note field with the municipality description. The media field will be associated with the municipality narrative. It's time to publish the app and see how it looks on the simulator. Here are the tabs for location, criteria, and thumbnails. And if I go to the update screen, I've now got a much nicer layout of the update screen, showing the address at the top, the photo description side by side, and the other fields side by side. That's a big improvement. I can go across to the I can go across to the vendor tab and see the vendor's name and address and the municipality tab. That concludes this tutorial on designing screen layouts. In later tutorials, I will show you how to display the location of the property on a map and how to add detail grids of photos and available time slots for viewing the property on the photos and viewing tabs respectively. I will also show you how to clean up the navigation a bit and add the ability to search for specific listings, add the vendor's coordinates to the contact manager, and other nifty features. Thank you.